final presenter today uh, is uh, Erlen, and he's he's in the corporate research uh, leadership role at, at Bosch. And he's been infatuated with semantics since uh, 2007 and is now gaining some executive recognition with his expansion of uh, data centric thinking. Just help us understand a little bit more about how you're solving kind of this broader vocabulary problem with a, a common model. Thank you for, so much for, for inviting me here. Very honored to be in this uh, team of, of presenters. Um, thanks, uh, Semantic Arts, for, for the invitation and Steve for the introduction. So my name is Irlan Granjel Gonzalez. I am a, a leader in project leader in, in corporate research uh, at Bosch, as Steve was already saying. And I will be just um, also um, talking today about what I call here knowledge graph based data science uh, at Bosch. Um, so a quick agenda. I mean, first of all, uh, Bosch, we, who we are. Um, speaking about, I mean, I, I really enjoy some, uh, most of the presentations. We are really uh, facing similar problems and also uh, sharing many ideas to solve uh, our problem. Semantic data integration, harmonization, using knowledge graph, data-centric approach, a very specific use case, uh, I mean, set of use cases tackled with a so-called core information model for manufacturing we have been developing at, at Bosch and also in collaboration with external uh, companies. A bit of knowledge graph completion, something that we also need to do on top of that, and where we want to go, and already started, and finally, uh, key takeaways of our. So Bosch, uh, maybe you you know, maybe you don't. Um, Bosch is the, the the main main phrase will be like invented for life. So uh, we produce many different uh, uh, products, as you might have seen in the picture. Um, one to have to add our products and solutions uh, spark enthusiasts as you can see here um, enhance quality of people life and help conserve natural resources um, mostly focus on these four main business sectors from mobility solutions industrial technology energy and building technology and consumer goods i mean i buy myself uh, bosch tools for for my personal use so i really believe in 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 the quality that we have at bosch and just a, just for you to also to 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 perspective of, of the company, I think that these numbers are for 2021. Um, just recently, I think the numbers are even bigger, uh, especially the the revenue in general one and the associates around the world and the, the countries where we are present. You you might imagine with this number of associates, the data uh, is really a, a key problem to to solve where we want to go. So we at Bosch want to become uh, uh, AIoT leading company in all these uh, business sectors that you have seen before, where our products uh, con um, have the artificial intelligence and, and uh, machine learning embedded on top of this. And of course, data is the, the key asset to, to go there, as you might already know. And particularly inside this, um, this uh, movement Bosch is very active in industry 4.0 for those who know do not know the term actually this, this was coined in 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 Germany 2011 but also so you see in the US in Europe in France in, in Japan and many others speaking about the uh, um, uh, smart manufacturing so the 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 factories here are not uh, static anymore or in our uh, division is not they are not static anymore, but thanks to machines and processes that actually are featuring AI-driven connectivity. So this, the, the plans that we have at Bosch um, take automation to a new uh, level. So inside this, this constellation at Bosch, where there are many a huge business units and so on, there is corporate research. Bosch corporate research take, takes, uh, I mean, state-of-the-art solutions and then we apply them to real problems and uh, you have you might see here uh, this guy on the right hand side it happens that i was actually doing my phd exactly in the same topic and when i google it while i finished my, my dissertation i just happened to find um a position at bosch with the, exactly the same topic that my phd uh, thesis so then I, uh, of course, then I, uh, I, here I am already four years, and then I am leading a team of eight um, uh, 
so say data scientists across the different places uh, to software developers and we have connection and real use cases with more than uh, at least uh, f- five to seven uh, business, different business uh, units all in all of them applying data centric approach but when i came to bosch i saw this the same thing you might have seen i mean data sources we have many uh, for, spanning from erp system from uh, MES system, production, vehicle, claims, engineering, and application-centric. Everybody wants to, they need to have an application, and now they need yet another data, and they need yet another uh, connection. So this is definitely not not uh, scalable, not sustainable, and so on. So, and why? Because, I mean, you might imagine how big is our company, and currently there is no there was no existing work towards a standardization even though we have many standards but the in, in, concretely uh, reusability scalability so basically when someone was creating a data model for an application this was like only using that application so not not reusability um very important here uh, also something that has helped us to convince stakeholders semantic explicit so in this picture you saw before, there was no, the semantic word not made explicit. And imagine, imagine that we have here uh, many different business units, different countries, different languages and so on. And sometimes we, or many, most of the time, we have this semantic interoperability conflicts. And when someone wants to, well, goes to actually intend to solve these interoperability conflicts, this takes time and takes, and, and takes money to actually make them uh, interoperable uh, when we want to do it in a, in a, in this setting of industry 4.0 uh, data silos i mean i'm re- i've seen in my work how many excel sheets to solve a specific a, a specific problem sorry or yet another table in one data that is already in one data set which is already big or another another uh, local data dump so this really creates a very poor data quality and many more problems. And the most important thing I have seen here uh, also, I mean, really, really har- uh, harming, uh, damaging the, the, the data center approach is that the time and money is being wasted because data engineers, data scientists, they have to do the same work over and over again. Good thing is that um, we have worked very hard to convince the the management and looks like most of them are convinced. So uh, really there are already use cases that I will be describing, which were are in production already, and uh, where the data centric approach and the semantic web uh, ontologies, knowledge graph are being applied. So data enables the business. This is important. And semantics enable the data. And this is a quote from last year of our CEO, Dr. Stefan Hartung saying that semantic work on data will be uh, actually the future. And we were very happy seeing our CEO uh, saying this. Don't want to go into details here, but just this is what I really want to to, to, to highlight here, that I have been even in, in plants, in the actual plant, to talk to, to experts. And I have been uh, talking to experts in, in of many different domains inside this uh, industry 4.0. And it is huge, the knowledge that we have in the head of the ex- experts. It is really huge, the knowledge that we have sometimes in internal documents and so on and so forth. And it's our intention to take this, this, this knowledge and also make it, make it usable, make it uh, actionable. So coming really from, from the data, I mean, you might know this picture from, from time, but really coming from something like uh, error code, wrong dispensing. But okay, let's, let's make this convert it from the data and make it also knowledge and map it when, whenever it's possible. Sometimes in one plant, the same error has one name and in other plant, the, say, the same error has another name, but actually they mean the same. And then we need, we need to, to actually make this interoperable. So this is um, part of the things where we really want to go to generate wisdom based on uh, domain knowledge. And we are actually doing this. So I would not say that the data fabric and data mesh is, is completely uh, in, in, uh, implemented at Bosch, but we are going into that direction. So we have 
the all the data sources you have seen before. We have the uh, knowledge graph and the digital twin on top of knowledge graph. And we have all different apps that now are capable of sharing information and so on. Actually, at Bosch, there is something called Robert Bosch Semantic Stack that I am part also of this uh, stack, uh, where all these technologies have been uh, developed and, and there is a team behind this, uh, training and so on and so forth. I will be also discussing a bit uh, later. There is also a data strategy um, uh, approach where we are doing all of this, but then this has to be of course, align with this data strategy and this data governance. Otherwise, all the effort in doing all this knowledge graph, all these ontologies and so on is really uh, worthless. And I will concretely speak about something that I, we have been working on in the context of concretely of uh, in the context of Industry 4.0 or smart manufacturing, which we call core information model for manufacturing. So this is just a name for a set of ontologies that we have been developing in order to tackle concrete use cases because you might imagine that to to actually being able to to bring value to the organization in all this sea of data we actually had to start to to, to focus in concrete use cases and uh, the core information model for manufacturing not only help us to focus in one uh, use cases rather in some use cases that are actually uh, related so these are the set of ontologies that even they we publish um, uh, a version of these ontologies in combination with other um, companies, uh, also companies related to manufacturing. You might might find the 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 link here in the slides as well as a, a white paper that we we publish. So these ontologies span actually they are based in one of the very core standard for the Industry 4.0 initiative, which is this uh, IEC 62264 standard. And they range from, from physical asset, equipment, product, product segment, as you see here. I mean, feel free to, to look into the, the link and, and take details in the, in, the, in the white paper. I'm not going into details. I mean, there are experts uh, which I respect and I have read uh, your work from, from years here. I just want to bring the most important, let's say, um, concepts uh, that have, I mean, based on this concept, based on these ontologies, we have been able to establish a baseline of, of, of ontologies that we have been working, I mean, and concretely using in use cases. And here we have, uh, for example, uh, concepts like plan, area, equipment, uh, location, machine, asset, and so on, with a concrete definition of, of in a kind of a ge generic level, okay, what, what is a phys physical machine? Or what is a production line? So only the discussion, uh, internal discussion, in what is a production line, you, you, you might imagine this, this might take weeks between experts. Okay, what is a line? And actually, we, I think we have been successful in, 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 in bringing this to life. And it was, it was funny because I was in a meeting with a, a colleague of mine that we actually started all this effort, which now is being applied. And our colleagues have, I mean, they were, of course, not ontologists. They had this, this model, these data models in PowerPoints. And we say, okay, why not, why don't we take these data models and then we make them, uh, we bring them to life and we make them usable. And that's exactly it. And currently we have the, uh, the, these, these ontologies in the second version and they are being used in, in the use cases that would be presented afterwards. I mean, this is, a, of course, a very simple uh, example of how we, um, uh, I mean, implemented these ontologies with uh, specific instances and so on. Uh, again, you might feel free to, to look into the, the white paper. And of course, all of this is connected to this data strategy that I was uh, discussing before. And we have, of course, the also core ontologies that are developed at Bosch. We have a set of domain uh, core ontologies where this uh, core information model for manufacturing is being placed. And below that, we have also um, use case ontologies and application ontologies. And we ensure that all of them um, use a data glossary that is uh, shared across the, the organization and also that they are uh, connected um, following principles of, of course, a semantic, uh, semantic reuse, reusability, 
um, maybe connected even via a subclass or maybe connected even via um, a sub property. I mean, basic semantic principle for, for ontology uh, modeling. And I would like to, to, to dig deeper here in the concrete use cases that are actually today uh, deploy in production, in production use and, uh, and all of these use cases I will be presenting here, they are actually based on this um, uh, core information model for manufacturing ontologies. So uh, we have a nice scenario here. So on the, on, the, on the one hand, we have a department, which is the, the product engineering department, where that they deal with uh, product requirement data, meaning they say, okay, I, I need to manufacture a given, a given uh, product with certain dimensions and with certain uh, material. That's, what, that's on the one hand. On the other hand, we have, um, we have the, the, guy, the, the guys in the plant and they have different lines and the, in the lines they have uh, different, um, different machines, sorry. And in these machines, they have different, different um, ways of dealing with this. Um, in the machines, they have ways of dealing with this um, um, I mean, these uh, capabilities, as we, we say it. So um, typically they are disconnected. They don't, they don't connect to each other. And actually we had, because difficult, they are two big departments, they are separated one another. So we find a way here to, first of all, make them talk to each other. And secondly, to bring this data together to solve semantic interoperability conflicts using this ontology that you, uh, I have presented you before and being able to actually um, answer these questions that you can see here. And it seems to be um, like a very easy question to answer, but actually in, in, in reality, this is not a, a, an easy question to, to answer. So this is one use case, actually, as I was saying, following this approach, I mean, you see, uh, we have the data sources, we have the domain ontologies, the mappings between the data sources and the domain ontologies. We have the core information model for manufacturing, and on top we have the the, the knowledge graph. And in in this following this this approach and data centric approach with ontologies and so on, we managed to solve semantic interoperability conflicts and enable the the, the end user to get question to get answers to the questions that they were not possible to get before, before that. So that's that's one use case that actually, again, uh, is, is, is been under in, in production today. Another use case, and you, you can actually even see this in the, in, the, in the Bosch Internet's website, is called the Digital CV. So the Digital CV is a product-centric software solution based on Knowledge Graph and Digital Twins. And, um, this is due to the, this, this division at Bosch, this Bosch, Bosch uh, powertrain solutions. They, they produce different, different components, different electric drive solutions for actually for electric vehicles. And these solutions, they, they are really complex in terms of, of parts that they have. And they want to, to have uh, uh, transparency and traceability of these uh, solutions across all the life cycle. And, there are many data sources involved in this process. And the same happened here, different semantic conflicts, different data formats and so on and so forth. So following this, this approach of data centric, bringing, bringing data, putting uh, ontologies on top of this data, bringing data together to a knowledge graph. Then we have this continuous life cycle transparency, of course, provides a cost and time savings and at the end, improve decision uh, making in the whole uh, process. Again, this is another really interesting project that is already a software product developed in our organization. The, I would say um, this use case was born in my personal notebook. And we are actually having here, um, we, we wanted to have these questions answered. Again, they seem to be simple questions, but actually they are not at all, especially when, it, when you are integrating data from more than 12 plants around, around the world in different countries, different uh, languages, and you name it. Which production lines comprise machines for manufacturing X? Again, 
when we started this project only focus in one plan and everything seems to work very nice and then when we expand and we make scale to a different ones then the the the, the things got complicated but again this data centric approach really help us to solve this uh, uh, this project in a in a really a really nice level we have another question here which production lines are currently installed in our plants so again only by combining the, the meaning okay what is a production line this was a huge discussion with the, with stakeholders and as you see as you see here we we utilize the core information model for manufacturing ontologies so product ontology equipment ontology physical asset we develop a particular ontology for for this in this case will be is like application ontology we develop this application ontology for for this use case and manage to 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 we provide even a, a procedure to ensure that the data quality that we have in our knowledge graph is the right one because we uh, we presented the system once to the actual stakeholder and say okay this data this is nice but but the data have to have even better quality so there was also a process of data cleaning uh, and, and, i mean making the, the the data issues transparent to to the to the end users and this was really a huge effort that but at the end another product that uh, uh, that is is today is being developed by our organization and there were a lot of people convinced because they could see the return of investment of this data centric and knowledge graph based uh, approach at boss and what I, I call it data science because we are even doing uh, all of this we are doing it as a, i think uh, it was in UBS presentation before, we are also doing it for enabling data scientists to apply uh, machine learning and uh, AI algorithm on top of this. And uh, just minor um, 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 statistic here. So we have uh, we have this this system actually currently in use in more than eleven plants, integrating data as you see here from more than one thousand. 100 production lines, more than 16 physical machines, and 13 manufacturing processes. I've been personally involved in this project for more than three years, and it has been beautiful, the, the, all the experiences I have had, because it's one thing is when you are working in the theory, and actually the other things were really uh, talking to stakeholders, convince them about the, I mean, I also, uh, use a bit of this i really like the previous presentation because this this modeling this way of presenting modeling to to convey uh, the, the the to convince people about this this approach because i mean we definitely have huge data uh, things that we have to to solve um and very interestingly here after we realized the first mvp and the data was being semantically harmonized and integrated more than different applications that were being developed um, uh, separately. They requested data here because they knew that this data was actually harmonized and semantically integrated, which was very interesting uh, in this project. I will not go into details here, but one thing we realized is that even though the, even though we have done all of this, integrated the data, uh, the right ontology. Um, I mean, even the ontology and the knowledge graph evolution has been also a, a very interesting thing, but not going to details there. But the point here is that we, despite all the effort, we, we find out that um, due to the dynamicity, also the data quality, we needed to, to, to provide something else for knowledge graph completion. Um, meaning that there's sometimes we need to, to, to complete the knowledge graph in order to have the, the answers that we, um, we will, I mean, to, to have more answers than the one we have today. I mean, with the one we have today is okay, but remember I am also a researcher and I have seen that, um, that uh, it is needed sometimes to further complete the knowledge graph in order to have all the answers that actually we uh, want to have and you see the, the 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 question here can new relations be predicted based on top of knowledge graph something like okay is machine two also belonging to to line one and there are pretty pretty uh, nice answers to that in the in the data we have so 
In order to do that, we are actually investigating regarding graph neural networks, graph embeddings, more into the research area because I'm I'm, I'm moving between these two worlds. So the, the 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 my role is like really be in between. So we are doing research, but we are doing research on top of real problems, and we actually have to provide real solutions to the people who are working in the business unit. Yeah, and in this in this pipeline, we are actually investigating on top of this uh, all these use cases you you have seen here in how we can um, complete them because this is definitely one need. We need to complete the knowledge graph most of the time. All right. So then discussion. We were able to provide uh, so far this integrated 206 degree view of data. And this is already it convinced a lot of the stakeholders um, because we enable extra to, to, uh, to, to access data that they could not access, uh, access uh, before that. Actually, there was people who, who told to us, who told us, okay, this is not possible. We tried for two years, we cannot do it. And then we proved that it was possible. We provide some even dashboards, and then now we they can play with the data semantically integrated and harmonized. In this is another use case that I did not present it here. We involve domain experts here, and this was one of the key reasons for uh, the use cases that today they are successful. And you you see here below that I have been myself involved in the training of more than four hundred people. And this seems huge, and actually it is, but I have been four years very, very, very nicely busy. Yeah. So data reusability. You show the people when you have the data clean, which is a huge effort in a knowledge graph where that you have correct your correct your eyes and so on and so forth. Then many applications uh, starting popping up. Say, so, yeah, I need this data, I need this data. So data reusability, definitely one of the things that... Um, our colleague have, has, have seen this is definitely an added value that you are providing with your approach here. And impact on data quality. Once we made the data transparent, they have seen, ah, okay, then I, I need to fix this data, but we cannot fix this data in the knowledge graph. Then, okay, but then you have to go to maybe to ERP systems or, or to manufacturing execution system, and there you have to fix. I mean, it's not my, my I, I'm, I'm just making this transparent to you, yeah? Okay, so where we want to go? I'm already started going. So I would I would say the first thing will be the like a, going to a full implementation of the data fabric and data mesh concept. I think this is um uh, it is it, challenging and it's challenging due to the different opinions to the to the to the size of the organization. So it, it's not easy, but there are many people convinced we uh, i'm not alone here so there is a uh, there is my team and there is there are another teams that we are also collaborating together inside my organization as corporate research but also outside the organization and most of us we are convinced about this uh, data fabric the combination of data fabric data mesh as a as a solution one of the things that i personally not very um uh, we we are a team that we are not very convinced some of the time uh, is the performance and scalability of, of the tooling that actually uh, are supporting us. I mean, so far it's okay, but I would say this is one of the, uh, one of the things that could be improved by the tooling that are uh, actually used to implement Knowledge Graph. We are also aiming to go for search engines so because we have now the Knowledge Graph. So we, in some of the projects, actually, the vision is to have like a Google-like search for uh, engines on top of domain-specific knowledge graph. And at the end, um, and this is also, I was saying, the, 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 the title of the, the presentation, we are already doing two things. We are doing machine learning for knowledge graph in, in the sense of knowledge graph completion for, I mean, uh, lean prediction, no classification, subgraph pattern detection, and also doing machine learning on top of knowledge graph. How the, the semantics, how the, the ontologies are actually enabling that the, the whole pipeline that is currently used for machine learning can be improved and enhanced. Yeah. So these are two things that we are actually uh, highly or very active uh, investigating. 
last uh, takeaways, key takeaways. I mean, as you have, I have seen, as you have might have heard, I have been personally working um, in, in, in even helping the coding and the, the team, but mostly dealing with uh, the, the, the decision, the design decisions regarding the ontologies and so on. Also the pipelines for data integration. So I really felt the pain of the data quality, of the lack of semantics, of all of this. And one of the things that I would say, okay, let's, you, you, you have seen how big Bosch is. yeah. So of course we are, have to think big, but then you have to really start small. I think there was another presentation that was saying something like this. We really want to provide value. And in order to do that, we have to focus in a concrete use case and this is what actually we start doing with this um, core information model for manufacturing ontologies and with this use case that I have been uh, presenting. I like also to deep dive on the semantic of data. I mean, make transparent the conflicts. The, the, the people have to understand that semantic is not just another buzzword. Semantic is about meaning. And the meaning is uh, how it's, it's actually encoded in data. And when, if we want to make the, the machines and humans understand, then we have to make this aware of, the, aware of that. And we have to make our uh, stakeholders that resolving semantic interoperability conflict is something sometimes is hidden behind the pipelines of their very good people we have in our organizations. But when you want to scale, you have to do this in a, again, in a scalable way. I would say then, Focus on the concrete added value for the organization. This is what, what we do, what we did, and now we are doing the divide. I mean, focus on different use cases. I mean, every use case is bringing a concrete added value. My team is currently working in at least in, in six concrete use cases now, and every one of these use cases is using the same approach. They are separated in, in a sense, but also connected in another sense. Create ontologies based on standards and best practices and make them fit to the data and the expert knowledge. I think, as you might have seen, uh, we created these ontologies based on a very important standard for Industry 4.0. Industry 4.0 is not the only uh, domain we tackle, but this is the one we focus on. And I think um, at least having standards as a base to, because when we try to communicate with, with stakeholders, it's very important to say, okay, where this, this, this concept came from, how I, I define a machine. And it's always very important to say, okay, I define a machine because machine is defined in this standard, which is very important for our organization or even for a, a certain community. And last, but I would say not least, is find ex knowledge, knowledge experts willing to collaborate, train, learn from, domain experts. I would say I have seen in my experience that this combination is really or has been sometime the, the key uh, ingredient to success in, in, in those projects. Having knowledge, expert guy, people who have no idea of what is the knowledge we have, but they, they know they have a problem with data and we managed to convince them, okay, let's collaborate because at the end we both want the same. We, we want to have a win-win situation here. And I think this was, um, in my experience, very, very important thing for, um, for the success of uh, uh, these three use cases that we have been um, uh, working uh, on. And of course, many others um, that we are also working on. Yeah. All right. That brings me to the end of the presentation. Yeah. I will be happy to take any questions. Yeah, a couple from the chat. How many people are working on core ontologies at Bosch? Are they working on the domain and use case ontologies? And were they hired or trained? In core ontology, I would say we have um, we have different groups of um, divided be around six, seven um, folks. I would say. In core ontologies, we might have around 20, 20 colleagues working in, 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 in core ontologies, yeah? And uh, were these people generally hired or, or trained? I'm sure a little bit of both, yeah. but... Good, good point. Uh, I mean, most of, most of the people are, 
uh, are higher, but we have been trained also many people. I mean, the, both of them. I mean, people are higher, yes, uh, because we need semantic expert for, to deal with this kind of uh, upper level ontologies, core ontologies. But um, um, we are also training uh, many people because I don't think that the, the, the people that are higher today are enough to meet all the, 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 the requirements we have. Another one, uh, how do you handle multiple entities of the same information spread on multiple systems? From a data-centric perspective, I would think you would want to integrate the source systems. Is this also your approach? I mean, one, this is very, thank you for the question, very good one. And I think one, we, one thing we have done is that we tackle, let's say, a domain. Yeah. And in this domain, we have we might have one or many ontologies. For example, of these that have been presenting in the core information model for manufacturing, and then is it very important here? There are many things to take into account. One thing is the creation of identifiers. Yeah, so we have to we have to concretely define how when we bring data from different data sources, how we create the, uh, the identifiers. Because sometimes we have virtual graph or sometimes we have materialized graph, but in any case, the, the, the graph are, are taking, pulling data from the, the data sources. So the ontologies here are important to define the unique identifiers. And this is not a, an easy thing, but we have this, this let's say, use case application ontologies like they are really done for working on top of the a given i mean a specific application or a specific domain uh, sorry a specific application or a specific use case on top of that then we have this domain ontologies and then we link the 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 domain the use case ontologies to, to this domain ontology so in that way we can have different uh, entities from different sources and describe them with this uh, combination. Yeah. Uh, one more here. How did you make domain experts help you as part of their daily job in a top-down approach? Was there some kind of rule for spontaneous questions or have you stuck to some sort of regular meetings? Meetings, sorry. Yeah, this has been, uh, this is, has been an is still but I think they have the, the data problem for them has become so huge that they are desperate looking for 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 solutions. And we try to make them part of the team. And we really try to to first of all to 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 be act like a, some sort of evangelist. So we say, okay, why ontologies, why knowledge graph? how we, we, we take them from their hands and we show them, okay, you don't have to be an expert of onto, in ontologies or data integration. We are the expert, that, but we want you to understand, okay, here is your data source. Here is your data source. The, let's bring them together. We try to show them the process, at least that they uh, la, la, try. Sometimes we make it, sometimes we haven't, but at least, so I have the, the experience that I, some colleague in, in Romania, in the beginning, he was saying, no, I will not use that. But at the end, you say, OK, knowledge graph are really, uh, are really cool because they actually solve my problem of uh, bringing data uh, together. So we, we try to bring um, to work um, uh, together with, with the main next one. So essentially, you cause them to own the project. So yeah. Um, I mean, the, the, the role of, of uh, corporate research is we develop the project with them until they, they, they have the buy-in. We don't, I mean, let's say we, we, do not, we are not always successful. I mean, I have to be honest. We are very passionate. We uh, really uh, want to make it and we have done it. But sometimes they say, okay, I cannot, I cannot do it this year, maybe next year, because I don't have the people ready. Or it's like I just have to really train many people. And yeah, that's nice. But so 
um, who at the end, when they really have the buy-in, uh, we made them on the projects. So they actually can take this over and then continue the, the further development of the projects. Yeah. Yes. I mean, okay. there's no free lunch. There is a huge uh, work. <laughs> yeah? We have to... <laughs> really convince them with, uh, I mean, in, in the, with, with their own data, uh, make them aware of the, the, the semantics uh, issues they have, conflicts, and how we are solving them, and how this is saving time and money for them. If we get to this point and say they have this aha moment, so they, they have the buy-in. Yeah? Yes, yes, that was, uh, that was amazing. Thank you. So much uh, for that uh, that full description, the use cases. Uh, you know, you covered covered a lot of ground there. And thank you for your for your wife for allowing us to share you this evening too, because I know there was some personal time that you uh, had to step away there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure. Yeah, th thank you for having me here. It was a real real pleasure, and also enjoy the the previous presentations. Yeah. <laughs>